Good morning and welcome to Worship for Northminster United Church. It is good to be together from near and far. Thank you for joining us today for worship. And we have the Christ candle lit as a symbol of Christ whose light and love guides us in the creative creativity of our faith to explore new avenues, to develop a caring community, to envision a world of peace and freedom. And for our land acknowledgement, we also acknowledge in a moment of gratitude that we live, work, worship and play on Treaty 7 lands. I invite you now to watch a Threshold Moment video to more deeply prepare our hearts and minds for worship. Christian mystic of the 14th century, Julian of Norwich, lived during one of the worst centuries of human history, including the Black Death pandemic that wiped out millions of people, famines, floods, war, and corruption. In her writing, she addresses what she believed to be at the root of suffering, the misplaced idea of God's rejection. Without this core belief in beauty and sacred worth, we engage in self and other destroying behaviors, inducing further suffering. Contemplative practices invite us into union with the Divine One, healing the wounds of forgetfulness.
And now for our opening prayer. Let us pray. Divine goodness, Holy One, pause us for this moment. Bear us up in this time. Hold us for eternity. We open to your warming presence. We remember we came from you. We affirm all beings are your beloved, and all people say, Amen. I praise Yahweh who guides me. Even at night my heart teaches me. I'm always aware of your presence. You are right by my side and nothing can shake me. My heart is happy and my tongue sings for joy. I feel completely safe with you because you won't abandon me to the grave you won't let your loved ones see decay. You show me the path to life. Your presence fills me with joy. Beautiful things are always in your right hand. A Christian mystic of the 14th century, Julian of Norwich, lived during one of the worst centuries of human history, including the pandemic that wiped out millions of people, famines, floods, war, and corruption. In her writing, she addresses what she believed to be the root of suffering, the missed place of God's rejection. Suffering is part of being human, but what makes suffering soul soul Soul, soul destroying is our forgetfulness that God is with us. Without this core belief in beauty and sacred worth, we engage in self and other destroying behaviors, introducing further suffering. Contemplative practices invite us into union with the Divine One, healing the wounds of forgetfulness. And from Psalm 16, I praise Yahweh who guides me, even at night, my heart teaches me. I'm always aware of your presence. You are right by my side and nothing can shake me. My heart is happy and my tongue sings for joy. I feel completely safe with you because you won't abandon me to the grave. You won't let your loved ones see decay. Yes, show me the path of life. Your presence, fulfill, your presence fills me with joy. Beautiful things are always in your right hand. Researchers of the brain and behavior say that humans have a negative bias. We tend to pay more attention and to more easily remember negative encounters and interactions. It makes sense evolutionary. It keeps us safe to avoid what we perceive as harmful. I imagine this is especially true in times of pandemic, famines, floods, war and corruption. Our negative bias can keep us safe, but it can also make us feel miserable. It can be one of those things that impede our relationship to God and to one another. Some say that we also have a natural tendency toward the good, both ordinary good things and also the ultimate good, the beloved God. The contemplative life helps us keep our negative bias in check. It invites us to rest secure in the knowledge that we are beloved children of God. The psalmist reminds us that one of the practices that leads us toward goodness is the practice of worship. Even in the midst of real suffering, we praise God. Remember the one who holds us, stays with us, fills us with the fulfillment of joy. It is in the security of this place, in the arms of the Beloved, that we can find the strength and audacity to see and name what Fardy describes as the thing within ourselves and our society that impedes our desire to love Holy Wisdom and her world. We are beloved of the Beloved. Forgetting who we are does not mean we do not believe in God. But it may be that even in our believing, our primary experience of ourselves as an ordinary people 
trying to make it in a modern society enmeshed in its satisfactions and frustrations. We believe in God, but we have accepted the identity that is given to us by school, work, family, and society. God is an appendage of this identity, reflecting the values of our church, nation, or society. But who are we really? What is the depth that stirs in our deepest loves and delights, in the anguish of human affection, in our secret restlessness? It is our condition to live in illusion and confusion. We endure a thousand sufferings and indignities, pursuing a thousand pleasures, anxious over real and imagined difficulties. We believe in God, but often feel flat and cold toward him. Perhaps we are angry at his impotence in the face of the suffering and injustice that soaks into every inch of the withering earth. Contemplation invites us to acknowledge and reframe these things, but it does so by challenging many of our root religious ideas. A contemplative way of life is not simply adding on meditation or prayer practices to our beliefs about God. It is a wild journey that unravels our beliefs about God in order to drop into deeper relationship with the Divine Beloved. I cannot pretend to know more about God than anyone else, but in ancient and modern contemplatives, we might stretch our holy imagination and break up old I idols that may not have served us. As we explore what is meant to be as we explore what is meant to be made of for the beloved, we commence the adventure of abandoning what we thought we knew and proceed into the unknown with courage and determination. Amen.
and prayers for the people. During this time of prayer, if you would like to share a prayer of concern or thanks for yourself or someone or a situation in the world, please type them into the comments at any point so that all others who are watching can take time to read your prayer and lift it to God. This time of prayer invites us to an eyes open experience of looking around. Try keeping your eyes open as we pray. Look around and feel and find something to focus on. It may be a detail that you rarely see or something you, that you have seen frequently, but you can see it in more detail. Or you may just let your gaze wander during prayers as a way of giving thanks for these surroundings. Let us pray. Our Creator, you sustain all life. Give bread to all who need it and hear the voices of those calling to you. We ask that, as you have graciously provided for us and our needs, may you provide for those who call to you in despair and need. Grant them their, their daily bread these coming days. In our times of weariness and hour of need, yours is the strength by which we carry on, the shoulder we rest our head on, when our load is heavy and too much to bear, your, yours are the arms stretched out to help us. The grace that we depend on in times of darkness and concern, when we need you the most, your voice is heard. Come, find rest. This great divine, the path we tend to wholeness of body and spirit, this is the path that leads to you and for which we offer our offering of praise. As these words in the name of as we pray these words in the name of Jesus who taught us to pray saying our Father in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespassed against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. On behalf of North Minister Community, we thank you for your generosity as you continue to give faithfully to the present and future ministries of this congregation. Thank you for the gifts dropped off at the church, donations made through our website, and those who give through par and tithely. Let us bless all the expressions of our faith. Let's pray. Holy One, there are no limits to your goodness and love. We receive more than we can ever ask for or imagine. And so we joyfully give these gifts in return. Bless our offerings and use them to bring compassion, hope, and justice to the world. Be at work in us and all we share. Amen. Thank you for worshiping together here this morning. We continue to be the church in all the ways that are possible. Do read your weekly emails that come from the church so you know how we can support you and how you can keep in touch. And our blessing. The world is so varied and beautiful. Seek wisdom wherever it is to be found. And may the goodness of the Creator, the companionship of Christ, and the insight of the Spirit infuse your life now and always. Amen. And peace be with you all. As we end our time of worship, enjoy this video and be in awe of God's creation. Goodbye for now.
arms for me.